Hello once again ladies and gentlemen. This will be case study number 25 on right lower quadrant pain. Very common to see in the ER. Very important to really get your differential diagnosis down. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I appreciate all of you who have already stepped up to donate and those of you who are considering it. So thank you very much in advance. Okay, we got a 27-year-old white woman coming into the ED complaining of right-sided abdominal pain over the last nine hours. It began when she woke up this morning and she thought it was gas, but it's only worsened throughout the day. She's tried a calcium carbonate antacid and famotidine, but neither have helped. She describes the pain as stabbing and rates it as 7 out of 10 and quickly worsening. She denies any other symptoms, including diarrhea and vomiting, but says that she has been somewhat nauseous. She's very concerned that she is pregnant. Her last period was four weeks ago, and she says that her cycles are unpredictable and can be anywhere between three and five weeks. She works as a barista. She's monogamous with her husband, and there are they're not using any form of birth control, and I'll just add she doesn't smoke, drink, or do drugs. Family history is non-contributory. She's got no significant past medical history and is on no medications uh, except for a prenatal vitamin. And her vitals show an elevated blood pressure, an elevated heart rate, and an elevated temperature. What are we going to do for our physical exam? So she is in the ED, so we're going to keep this pretty targeted. So she's in visible pain, heart and lungs are fine, abdomen. Okay, so the pain is worsened on palpation of the left lower quadrant, but appreciated in the right lower quadrant. This is called Robsing's sign. Okay, you should look up what that means. Guarding on palpation of the right lower quadrant and near the umbilicus, diminished bowel sounds throughout, non distended. Uh, anytime there's a GI issue going on, abdominal, uh, you need to do a rectal exam and it comes back normal. And we're going to take a look at her genitals, uh, normal female genitalia, uterus not enlarged, no adnexal masses or tenderness, i.e. normal. Okay, what's our differential? So we have a broad differential for right lower quadrant pain. Now, you may have your idea of what right lower quadrant pain is caused by. However, localization of pain is not perfect, so you want to consider adjacent regions. So think of periumbilical pain or lower, uh, maybe pelvic pain, um, and even possibly think of causes of right upper quadrant pain too. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is a variety of different causes of abdominal pain. And then we also need to consider, uh, because this is lower pain, we need to consider some of the urogynecologic causes as well. So our initial workup, we first need to consider the immediate order. So this is a patient that's nauseated and in pain. We need to tend to that first. So we're going to give her IV morphine, but make sure to check her allergies first. On CCS, it's going to be really important. You don't want to give a patient morphine if they're allergic. It's a common allergy. We're going to bolus her with saline, and then we're going to give promethazine, very quick-acting antiemetic, can be given IV. Now, the first thing we want to do is check to see if she's pregnant, because if she is pregnant, then there's a risk of an ectopic pregnancy. We also want to make sure that she's not pregnant, because one of the things that we're probably going to be doing on her is a CT, and we don't want to do that if she's pregnant. We're going to get a CBC, BMP, and a urinalysis. Consider the fact that pyelonephritis, urinary tract infections, can cause lower abdominal pain. So her pregnancy test comes back negative. She's got an elevated white count and predominant neutrophils, suggesting a bacterial infection. Her BMP is within normal limits, and her urinalysis was negative. So we could probably rule out most of our urogynecologic causes, and now we're really looking at an infectious process. So our next thing that we're going to do is a CT abdomen. We're really, really considering appendicitis here. And... The CT comes back with a dilated appendix at 8 millimeters with wall thickening and enhancement. There is fat stranding and an appendicolith is identified, also known as a fecalith. So the diagnosis here is acute appendicitis. What we want to do here is we want to give uh, do all of our basic preoperative orders. So we want to give preop antibiotics, which we can use sufoxetine. 
Uh, she's going to be NPO. Anytime you make someone NPO, you've got to give them something to keep their blood sugar up and whatnot. So uh, that's going to be IVD half normal saline. Uh, we're going to type and cross match and get a PTPTT. We pretty much do all this stuff always for surgery. We're going to, of course, consult general surgery, and you're going to need to know on CCS what you're going to be doing, and that's going to be a laparoscopic appendectomy. Now, there is non-surgical management for appendicitis. It's kind of coming in vogue, uh, but don't even think about that for CCS. You're going to do an appendectomy. So acute appendicitis is an inflammation of the vermiform appendix, usually due to a fecalith or in particularly in children, inflamed lymphoid tissue, so it can follow a viral infection. It tends to present in phases. Initially, it starts out as kind of nauseous, flu-like symptoms, maybe uh, just kind of feeling out of it, maybe some vague periumbilical pain. And then with time, that starts to migrate to the right lower quadrant and they start to spike a fever. After days, if it doesn't get treated, they can have perforation, which is gonna to lead to an acute abdomen. They can become febrile and septic. The best initial step for a patient with severe abdominal pain is to manage the pain. Okay, we're treating patients, we're not just treating diseases. So use IV morphine unless the patient has a contra uh, contraindication. The lab should be focused on ruling out pregnancy and urologic etiologies first. Um, particularly when we talk about women, uh, the best diagnostic step is going to be a CT abdomen. If you're dealing with a pediatric patient or a patient who's confirmed to be pregnant, then you'll want to do an abdominal ultrasound. If that doesn't give you um, the results that you're looking for, consider doing an MRI, but we want to avoid ionizing radiation. So avoid that. Uh, the management is going to be laparoscopic appendectomy, and remember your pre-surgical orders on CCS. This is me. Uh, I got appendicitis not horribly long ago and uh, ended up in the hospital for two days. Not a good time. These are some of your common differentials with right lower quadrant pain. Acute coli tends to be right upper quadrant, worsens with meals. Um, they may get colicky. Um, and then you'll do a right upper quadrant sonogram. Acute peritonitis is generalized. They're very sick looking. Uh, nephrolithiasis is lower, but it usually radiates to the groin. Urinalysis would show red cells, um, and CBC is typically normal. Ectopic pregnancy, look for a positive pregnancy test. You go to do an ultrasound, and you don't see a pregnancy in the uterus, but you find it in the tubes. Ovarian torsion is a very similar presentation, but they don't have a fever. There's usually a mass, um, especially on the ovaries. Um, at that point, if you feel a mass, you'll do a transveg ultrasound, and that will give you your diagnosis. Middle schmerz is um, an interesting phenomenon in women where in the middle of their cycle, they'll get pain, um, but they won't get a fever with this, and they'll usually have had it before. Endometriosis is cyclical pain. Uh, you can get endometriosis of the appendix. It's not uncommon, but again, this is something that they will typically have experienced before. Pelvic inflammatory disease look for a history of STD, particularly gonorrhea. There'll be cervical motion tenderness and tubo ovarian abscess. Again, look for a history of STD or pelvic inflammatory disease. And again, you'll have cervical motion tenderness. This is a, a nice little chart for abdominal pain by quadrant or section. What I like to do is if I hear that it's right lower quadrant pain, for instance, I not only look at the right lower quadrant, but I look a sector over um, on both sides. So we were going to consider in this, of course, appendicitis and some of the gynecologic causes, but we're also going to consider uh, nephrolithiasis, pyelonephritis, um, we're considering ectopic pregnancy, and so forth. Um, so don't just hone in on one quadrant, consider looking at others. So to recap, appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix, usually due to obstruction. Um, when you're doing your physical exam, make sure right afterwards to provide fluids, pain relief, and nausea. Sometimes you'll even do that before. Do not wait for a definitive diagnosis to do this. Always consider your gynecologic causes in women with lower abdominal pain. Rule out pregnancy in women of reproductive age, and I like to define that broadly, anywhere really from 10 to 55. Appendicitis is confirmed radiologically. Usually this means CT, but in confirmed pregnant patients and children go with ultrasound. 
remember to get a pregnancy test in women of reproductive age, both to rule out ectopic pregnancy and to ensure that CT is safe. Once the appendicitis is confirmed, you'll put in surgical orders. That includes antibiotics, NPO maintenance fluids type cross-match PTPTT, and make sure that you indicate on CCS that you're sending this patient off for a laparoscopic appendectomy.